one of the greatest tracks in the world, in one of the most beautiful parts of Italy, Puglia, that is in the heel of Italy, if you've seen the map. Magnificent sporting and motorsport heritage. We're not too far away from the Ugento circuit, which also hosted the World Championship. And interestingly enough, we're actually not that far away from the Nardo test track. If you've ever seen Top Gear, you'll remember when James, Jeremy and Richard hammered some supercars all the way through Italy. Well, that Nardo test track, which you can see from space, you can see it from Google Earth, it's 12 kilometres, perfectly round. It's only about 30 miles from where we are. It's where even Captain Slow, James May, managed to get a McLaren up to 300 clicks an hour. It's only about 30 or 40 miles to our west. And we're only about 10 kilometres from the Adriatic coast itself. And on a clear day, I'm told you can see all the way to the former Yugoslav state of Albania. Right across the Adriatic Sea. Not today, it's a little bit overcast. As we get ready for our second final of the afternoon, Senior KF, the World Championship class, you are looking at Nicholas Nielsen making his debut for the Tony Kart Racing Team. As cool as you'd like, the young driver from Denmark, the number 202 machine, steps into his cart. Richard Vashore, what a revelation he's been from the Netherlands. That's him on screen now, just out of juniors in the Xpre car. Starts on the outside of the front row. Max Futrell, formerly from Singapore. Originally from the United Kingdom, that's him now. Now back racing for the mother country, for Ricky Flynn Motorsport. Super successful team. RFM, they are the team dominating world karting at the moment. They took the world championship with Lando Norris about four months ago in France. And they are on the pace, be assured, once again this weekend. The energy cart of Rokas Pachuska from Lithuania. TM-powered energy. Beautiful carts, the energy, always well presented. Run by Michele Panagada and his team from Bergamo, up near Milan. But Chuska had a fantastic pre-final, came storming through. That's the American, the Lotus F1 junior driver, Juan Manuel Correa, also racing for energy. Casper <laughs> Anderson in the Alonso cart, another one of the Ricky Flynn Motorsport drivers. That's Lorenzo Travisinuto. The Italian driving the PCR car, Scuderia PCR, TM Power, plain white helmet. Doesn't make him go any faster, but he's driving the world-renowned PCR chassis. Of course, that's the car that won the World Championship way back in 1987 at Yezalo in the hands of Jean Piero Simoni. Great to see the PCR carts back on the pace in world motorsport. And how about this young kid all the way from New Zealand? I thought it was a long way from Melbourne. He's travelled here four flights from the South Island. Hi to all our friends who raced the NZ Pro Kart Series today. Marcus Armstrong, in his debut for the Tony Kart Racing Team, starts out of grid number 10 alongside the Estonian Yuri Vips. That's him on screen now. Winner of the World Rotax Final. Didn't have the best run through the heats, but he's managed to drag that cart up onto the fifth row of the grid, one ahead of Leonardo Lorandi and the Russian Igor Stupenkov, who we will look out for. There's Carol Bash. For years, we've seen him in the green machine, the Tony Kart driver. For 2015, he swapped over to the Cosmic Racing Department. Super cool customer is Carol from Poland. A country that continues to produce a number of world-class racing drivers. Need we mention the name Roberto Kubica, of course, who we saw on these tracks not too long ago, the former Birrell pilot. You're looking at the Alonso cart of the German, Kevin Brutschin. Hi to all our friends watching in Germany. 
of course, the DKM Masters Series, a very, very strong championship, one of the best international championships in the world of karting. That's Tom Bale. He qualified fastest on Friday afternoon on dry track. Didn't have the best run through the heats. Remember, it was pouring rain yesterday. Just test the front brakes with his right hand there. You can see hand operated front, four wheel disc brakes. Twenty five kilometres the distance. Adriano Albano with the MIR race suit. Tony Cart, Vortex powered. All these drivers on Vega tyres. Of course, thanks to our sponsors, Vega, Panta Fuels, BetItaly.it and Sparco Racewear. The WSK Champions Cup, the first event for 2015, the championship season. Don't forget the WSK Night Edition at the brand new Adria International Raceway in July. The WSK Super Master Series before that. As the 32nd board goes up, the girls leave the grid, trying not to distract the drivers among, along the way. All of them looking forward. A couple of them with some glances to the left. There's a couple of tenths of a second lost. The green flag flies. Nicholas Nielsen fires that Vortex engine into life. Oh, we've got one stalled on the grid. A couple slow to get away. You can see out our commentary box, that is Marcus Armstrong. No, 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 no. All the way from New Zealand. Come on, Marcus, get that Vortex fired. He's going to have to push it back to pit lane. And if he can get that engine running, he will start from dead last after qualifying 10. Tremendously bad luck for Marcus Armstrong all the way from NZ. Can you believe it? I can see the Ward Racing card of Alexander Dahlberg also slow to get away. Looks as though it's just running a little bit rich when it clears itself. He'll be able to rejoin the rest of the field. Well, that's a tragedy for both Dahlberg and the New Zealander, Marcus Armstrong. The rest of the field have already put a lap on those Vega tyres, getting some temperature in them. That's Armstrong to the right of your screen in pit lane. He's in the cart, just trying to see if he's got it fired. He may have done, but he has to wait for the rest of the field to go through to rejoin at the tail of these 24 drivers. He does get it fired up. Well done, Marcus. We'll rejoin at the back of the field. Our friends in NZ, you can cheer him on for the next 20 kilometers. 25 kilometers, are in fact, 20 laps. To start out of grid 10, if he can rejoin the field. No such problems for Nicholas Nielsen, the Tony Kart pilot, on screen to start from pole position with Richard Vashore alongside him. Carol Bash, Max Butrell on the second row of the grid with Rokas Pachuska and Kasper Anderson from Denmark on row three. We'll see if we get a start. They don't look the best formed up. We're in the hands of the race director, Mr. Alessandro Ferrari. But he's happy with the field and he lets the lights go out. Nicholas Nielsen races into the lead into turn one. Quite a clean start. We've lost no one. No one has even put a wheel into the dirt. Nicholas Nielsen leads them round for the first time. Max Futrell for Ricky Flynn Motorsport up into second spot. Fantastic start for the young Brit. For sure, he's in third in the Expri cart. They settle themselves down for this first lap. Already a strong lead for Nicholas Nielsen, the young blonde Dane. In his first race for the Tony Kart Racing Team. Leads with his head down. One down, 19 remain. They flash across our start finish line at 120 kilometers an hour for the first time. Nielsen leads Futrell, Vashore, Bash, 
Casper Anderson and the American Juan Correa, who is in fifth spot, make that sixth because he's been passed by Casper Anderson. Rokas Pachuska in seventh. Yuri Vips, a great start into eighth. Leonard, Leonardo Lorendi is ninth. And Emil Scaris rounds out your top ten. Tom Bale, the fastest qualifier, sits down in 15th spot. A driver to look out for is Igor Stupenkov. He's currently in position number 11, but he was fastest in the heats yesterday, which were in the rain. This is the fight for second place. Nielsen starts to pull away. Oh, they touch. A big touch there between Vashore and Carol Bash. NASCAR style on the start finish straight. Carol Bash in the Cosmic Cart, his debut for the Purple team, gets fed a wheel by the young Dutchman, Richard Vashore. Sensational stuff, Vashore. In second spot, let's watch Carol Bash. He's a very clean, very smooth driver. Again, down the main straight, cuts across, says, Harry, that bit of bitchman's mind, get out of my way. Vashore in second spot. Carol Bash is going to have to try something different. Remember, these cars have got front wheel disc brakes. Expect very, very late braking moves on this La Conca circuit. The two Ricky Flynn motorsport drivers in the Alonso carts. That's them there, the bright blue, white, and yellow machines. We've got the Tony cart leading the X3, the Cosmic, then the two Alonsos. So we've got OTK carts, the first five positions. Nielsen, that's him, 2-0-2, as cool as you'd like, pulling away from the rest of the field. I expect a move to come from the man on screen now, 2-0-1. That is Carol Bash, the driver from Poland. Flies over the ripple strip, does Richard Vashore, getting airborne. Up the inside, there's the move into second place. Cool, calm, absolutely methodical from the pole. Head down for sure as a look over the shoulder, tries to get him back, but he has to defend that third place from Futrell and behind him, his teammate Anderson. This is the move into the McLaren curves. A wheel up on the ripple strip from the shore. Might have cost him a fraction of time. I think Carol Bash had him lined up before that anyhow. Lorenzo Travisinuto in the PCR car, fastest lap of the race, but he's way down in 13th spot after a dreadful start that saw him lose five places. Nielsen with a 48.4 second lap last time round as they go side by side into the McLaren curves. Bash fighting off the two RFM drivers coming up to complete the first quarter of this race. For sure, in second spot. Bash now trying to fight off the two RFM drivers. You can see fastest lap again for 48.2 for Nielsen, pulling away while the battle rages for second, third, fifth, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth spot. Right down to the American Juan Correa and the energy car, that's him now. To the right of your screen, up the inside. Nicely done by the American. Blocks it on the exit quite fairly, you must say. Futrell and Anderson in a little bit of trouble now. Rokas Pachuska getting involved also in seventh spot. Down the start, finish straight. This is the start of their sixth lap. Very aggressive, very talented young Dutchman just out of juniors, Richard Vashore from the Netherlands, the X3 chassis. Carol Bash on the other hand, very calculating, very cool, very smooth. Oh, you can see how aggressive is young Vashore. Drags the right rear Vega tire onto the grass, using every bit of the racetrack and then some. Bash smashes over the ripple strip through the center chicane. Yuri Vips, the Rotax World Junior Champion, now up into eighth spot and trying to hunt down Casper Anderson. Vashore a little bit sideways coming onto the straight. Great drive thus far from the American Juan Correa. He is up into fifth spot in the energy cart. 
for our friends in NZ, Marcus Armstrong, after starting from the back of the grid, is now up into 19th position. It's getting very, very dark here at La Conca. Vershaw and Carol Bash in the center of your screen. It is the x Spree cart leading the Cosmic. Leading the Alonso cart, and out front it's the Green Machine. The Tony cart, which has won more world titles than I can count. Up the inside, Carol Bash, he's done the same move again. This time he's in second spot. A look over the shoulder, Carol Bash signals, hey, the lead is getting away. Up the inside, inside rear skips up nicely. Hardly any movement in the steering wheel. You can see how straight he drives that cosmic cart. And speaking of straight, speaking of smooth, how about this kid from Denmark? In the Tony cart. Last year was in the cosmic, switched over to the sister team. Turns in quite early, does Nicholas Nielsen. Bash over the ripple strip, driving it quite straight. So the pole chasing down the Dane with the Dutchman in third spot. It looks as though we've lost one of the energy carts on the back part of the circuit. Oh, indeed, I think that's Pachuska. As Nielsen comes through, and I'll tell you why, because it's starting to rain. The red flag is out. It's actually starting to rain reasonably heavily here. That's why the energy cart was slow, because it got turned around on the back straight. Lorenzo Travisanuto goes through at the bottom of your screen. Then it was Igor Stupenkov for Forza Racing. The red flag is out. We have not reached half race distance. This race will not be declared officially yet. I must confess, I'm a little surprised that the race was not neutralized with the double yellow flags. The track is greasy, but there is not yet standing water. If it does continue, they will change over to the Vega wet tires. Well, according to the Apple iPhone weather app, we were expecting some showers this afternoon, but I was hoping that our friends in California had made a little bit of a mistake, bit of a mistake with the app prediction. You can see how dark it is here in the south of Italy. It is only 10 to 3 in the afternoon and we just about need the lights on. The track's actually not that wet. There's not standing water. It's greasy. The grid girls will have to be real careful on their high heels, be assured. It's very slippery, but wet weather tyres, gee, I don't know. The rain's actually easing up. It's a brief shower. The red flag has come out. The cart's back into Park Ferme. Nielsen was your leader at the conclusion there. A lot of new chassis joining the grid this year as the green flag flies. Nielsen can't get that vortex started. He's stranded. Nielsen, no, this is a tragedy. Nicholas Nielsen from pole position is stranded on the grid. He can't get that engine fired into life. Neither can the 227 cart of Yuri Vips. Oh, can you believe it? He's being pushed back to pit lane. Colpa di Scena, what a shock. As they say here in Italy, now he's got it fired up. Is he going to be forced to start from pit lane? They are forcing him out despite the fact that it has fired into life. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Nicholas Nielsen. We said nothing flusters him, but this has got his attention. He's now in pit lane. They're desperately trying to change his spark plug. The crack Tony Kart racing team working frantically in pit lane. A foul spark plug, possibly a result of slowing down on that final wet lap. Look at the circuit out there now. Huge rooster tails of spray. Richard Vashaw with Carol Bash. That's now the front of the race. I'm looking down into pit lane. The red flag is hold, held up in front of Nicholas Nielsen. The track is absolutely saturated. Vega wet tyres on each of these driver's cuts. That's Nielsen to the right of your screen. He will have to rejoin at the back of the field after leading this race early on. 
by two or three seconds, fires it up, gets it sideways. This has certainly made the race interesting. Yuri Vips also gets that Ricky Flynn Motorsport Alonso cart fired up. Nicholas Nielsen, we said nothing flusters him, but this, this certainly will. He's had to start from pit lane. They've changed the plug. The engine's fired into life. Brutschin from Germany, also slow to get away. Kevin Brutschin in the Alonso cart. Nicholas Nielsen, he's still struggling to catch up to the back of the field. The green flag is being held by the race director in front of us, Mr. Alessandro Ferrari. When they cross the start finish line next time round, they will be racing. I can see a board being held up in front of me with number 202 on it. That is Nicholas Nielsen's number. Well, what a shock we've got. 12 laps to go. The green flag flies and getting it sideways in spectacular fashion is your new race leader, Richard Vershaw. We've got one card out in the grass. It is soaking, soaking wet. A lot of drivers struggling to cope with the conditions. Nielsen has rejoined at the back of the race. Let's see where he comes across the line. He's 19th. He's in position 19. And guess what? The rain has stopped. We've had this downpour. The storm has passed. The track is wet. Nicholas Nielsen said, I was having a fantastic week up until now. What's happened? I'm in 19th spot. And he's still struggling with that engine to get it cleared. Maybe he's even got water in through the airbox. He's struggling to see through his visor. It is soaking, soaking wet the field come down through the centre chicane for the first time. Watch them cut the corner. Over the ripple strip goes Richard Vershaw in the Expree cut. The young Dutch driver, huge plumes of spray, accelerating, wheel spinning under acceleration. Max Futrell. Dare I use the cliche that the Brits know how to race in the rain. He's sideways under acceleration. Just wheel spinning that Alonso car powered by the Vortex engine. That's Futrell on screen now. Let's watch the different lines of the drivers. Do they cut across the inside ripple strip or do they take the high line, the traditional wet weather line? Have a look at Juan Correa from the United States now up into third spot in the energy car. The black race suit using every bit of the racetrack, number 209, the Lotus F1 team junior driver. Kaspar Anderson in fourth. And hey, didn't we tell you before the race, the Russian Igor Stupenkov started out of 13th after one lap. He is now in position seven. He's made up five places in the opening laps. The Russian from Forza Racing, Igor Stupenkov. As they come down through the center chicane, this is half race distance now. Futrell getting very wide, still keeps it under control. It's very low in that cart. That's Correa on screen now. He's got Casper Anderson sideways. The cart wheels being under brakes. The white helmet is Lorenzo Travisinuto up the inside of Rocas Pachuska. They're still side by side as they go through the double right. Lorenzo Travisinuto. I look over the shoulder for the young Italian in the PCR. That's Richard Vashore on screen. Working that Expree steering wheel furiously over the ripple strip on the inside. There he goes, being hunted down by Max Futrell. Correa goes through at the bottom of your screen. Rocas Pachuska, there's Lorenzo Travisanuto. Igor Stupenkov, here comes the Russian. That's him in the orange and white cart, the bright orange helmet, tries the outside line. For Forza Racing, Stupenkov up into sixth place now. This will be the end of lap number 12. Sideways like a rally car. Richard Vershaw from the Netherlands. Power slides under acceleration. 125cc engines around about 35 horsepower. 
Futrell, he's working that steering wheel. Such is the wheel spin. It is so wet, he cannot keep it straight on the start-finish line. Seven and a half laps remaining. Your leader, Richard Vashore. Max Futrell and the American Juan Correa, Casper Anderson, Rokas Bachuska. Vashore starting to get a little bit of a rhythm but it's very, very hard to lead in these conditions, especially when you've got the young Brit, Max Futrell, behind you. Juan Correa driving superbly, the young American, for Energy Course, has raced all around the world. One driver who has competed in the Rotax World Finals previously, now is in the WSK Promotions. Here is the Champions Cup here at La Conca, Muro Lecceze. Futrell over the ripple strips. Correa right through the ripple strips. Sideways drifting style. Ken Block would be proud. There's the Russian, Igor Stupankov, coming through into the McLaren curves. They're all on opposite lock. There's Futrelli struggling to keep it straight. He's struggling to keep it turned in. Of course, he uses the front wheel brakes to max effect over the ripple strips. Richard Vashore. Six and a half laps remaining. It has stopped raining. The storm has passed. A 15 minute absolute torrential downpour. And the sky's clearing, but the track is still saturated. Different lines from these two drivers. The Dutchman and the Brit, who used to call Singapore home. There's Correa now, coming under attack from the Dane, Casper Anderson. Ricky Flynn Motorsport Karts in second and fourth. Anderson trying to make it third place, but he's got the energy cart of the young American Juan Correa in front of him. That's your race leader driving his heart out is Richard Vashore. Takes the wide line. Relatively straight for these conditions. Not so for Correa, just throws it in sideways. They come onto the start, finish straight, six laps remaining now. Anderson tries to clear his helmet. Still, again, Futrell wrestling that card in a straight line. That's Casper Anderson. Stupenkov, the Russian, here he comes. He's now up into position five. And I can tell you, he's hunting down the leaders. The Forts are racing, number 238 entry. Powered by Vortex in the Tony cart, the orange and white cart. He's quick, he's really quick. Last time round, 48.4 for the Russian. He's matching the leader's pace. He is about four seconds behind the leaders. As Vashore starts to bunch up ahead of Futrell, Correa and Anderson. This is three quarter race distance through the Senna chicane, up over the ripple strips. Correa now on the back of Futrell. Over the ripple strips goes Futrell and Correa, and there's Anderson, number 228, the Ricky Flynn Motorsport Alonso Kart. Stupenkov, you can see, in fifth position. Remember, at the restart, he was 13th. He was nowhere, relatively speaking, in the dry. Yesterday in the wet, he dominated. It rained again, and he's relishing the conditions. The driver from Moscow, Russia, Igor Stupenkov, into fifth place, hunting down the leaders. A little bit slower was in on that last lap. The yellow flag's out. We've lost one of the Alonso carts on the infield. The leader's coming up. We are at three-quarter race distance. Richard Vashore from the Netherlands. He was in juniors just a few months ago, competing in the CIK FIA Karting Academy Trophy. There's Stupenkopf at the left of your screen. That is Juan Correa in the energy cart, the black racers suit being pursued by the Russian in the orange and white cart. Behind him, Emil Skaras, Rokas Pachuska. Francois Becamal from France is in eighth. Lorenzo Travisinuto, he'll be one driving that wish it did stay dry. He had the PCR working in the dry, not so much in the wet. There's the two Ricky Flynn Motorsport carts in second and fourth spot. 
Correa has dropped that. Now he's under attack from Stupan Golf. Three and a half laps now to go. For sure, he's still leading. Futrell, Anderson. Correa has dropped back. Richard Vashore from the Netherlands driving superbly considering these position, conditions. Ricky Flynn Motorsport in second and third. They're used to winning. They won the World Championship four months ago in France with Lando Norris. They're not used to coming second and third. But that's the positions they find themselves in the moment. Richard Vashore from the Netherlands leads. Stupenkoff now up into fourth spot. Juan Correa from America has dropped back. Emil Scaris now finds himself up a spot. Stupenkov, 238. There he is, the orange and white car from Russia. Forza Racing, the team from the United Kingdom. Chasing the Ricky Flynn Motorsport cuts. Comes down the inside. Stupenkov. No, not this time. Richard for sure. He's driving superbly, the young Dutchman. Futrell in second spot. He called Singapore home for a number of years. They're used to torrential downpours on the equator. Racing at Cartwright Speedway, Changi Speedway, and now, of course, their new KF1 circuit at the Singapore Turf Club. He now calls Britain home. I won't say it's much, driver in, much drier over in the United Kingdom. Max Futrell, he's driving the wheels off that cart. He's closing in slightly on your leader, Richard Vashore, who goes wide. A look over the shoulder that time. Stupenkoff now up in the third spot. He's got by the Dane, Casper Anderson. Into third, make that second in a few moments' time, I do believe. Over the ripple strip goes the Russian. Wow. Forza racing. The Tony car takes the high line. He's putting the power down superbly. Here comes Stupenkoff. The question is, can he win it? He's got two laps to go. He started grid 13 at the restart. Vashore from Futrell, the high line from Stupenkoff up the inside. No. Whoa, this is exciting. I think he's going to pass him. In fact, he does so right now. The Russian in the second spot. Chasing down the Dutchman. He came from 13th on the grid. We know how quick he was in the wet up over the ripple strip. Igor Stupenkov in second place. The fastest driver on the track still remains your leader. Richard Vashore, this is the move into second for the Russian. Up over the ripple strip. Did it nicely. Futrell could not respond. Ricky Flynn Motorsport, their team carts are now in third and fourth place. A look over the shoulder that time for Stupenkov. The last lap board is being prepared as they come down through the center chicane for the second last time. Up over the ripple strip. Takes the high line. There comes the Russian. Richard Vashore uses every bit of the ripple strip. 1,250 metres to go of this La Conca circuit. Muro Lachesi. Now a look over the shoulder from the young Dutchman. The Russian is right behind him. He takes the high line. He's going to cut back on the inside. No, not this time. Eight corners remain for the Dutchman. He's driven superbly from the start, in the dry and in the wet. Another look over the shoulder from Richard Vashore for RB Racing. I can see how close they are out the window of our commentary box. Again, Stupenkopf, the high line. He's going to have the run on the exit. Over the shoulder, Richard Vashore has a look. Again, the high line. He's going to get him up the inside. There goes the Russian. Oh, sensational. Vashore holds him off. I'm just about out of breath, and we've got half a lap to go. They go up the back part of the circuit for the final time. This is the Senior Kaya final, the Champions Cup for 2015. I don't think he's close enough. He's trying. He's got it sideways under acceleration. He tries the NASCAR-style high line. Cuts back on the inside. He's not going to do it. It is the young Dutchman, Richard Vashore. Wow, what a drive. The Dutchman wins. Absolutely sensational in the dry. 
and in the wet. Richard Vashaw, just sensational. We can't speak highly enough of the young Russian. Igor Stupenkov in second place. Kasper Anderson came home third for RFM. Max Futrell, the other Ricky Flynn Motorsport driver, home in fourth spot. Head of Emil Scaris, Francois Becamal, Rokas Pachuska, Lorenzo Travisanuto, Alexander Dahlberg, and well done, Jakob Kadlach, rounding out the top ten. He is delighted. The young Dutchman just out of juniors last year. I can tell you it stopped raining, but the track is still very, very wet. Igor Stupankov gated everything. Remember at the restart, he was on grid 13. He had 13 laps to pass, 13 carts, and he came up just one short. Well done to our podium place getters. The Dutchman leads home the Russian, leads home the Dane, the Englishman, and the Swede. For sure, from Stupenkopf. Anderson, Futrell, Emil Scaris, Francois Becomel, Rokas Pachuska, Lorenzo Travisanuto, Alexander Dahlberg, and Jakob Kadlach for Gregor Kart in the Tony Kart rounds out your top 10. Wow, how good was that? Just sensational. You can see Juan Correa faded back to 12th spot at the end. Tom Bale, after qualifying fastest on Friday evening, only could manage 14th spot. He'll be back in seven days' time to do better. Unfortunately for young Marcus, a non-finisher, 12 laps behind for the young Kiwi. Marco Mastranzi classified one position ahead of him. This is the highlights of the race. Look at the track. It's dry. That was some half an hour ago. The time has gone super quickly. Nicholas Nielsen, whatever happened to him, he finished way, way down the field in 18. He led off the start. You can see him now disappearing into the distance. The track's dry. It's hard to imagine. That was just a few minutes to go. Richard Vashaw in the dry. Carol Bash. Bash finishing down in 17th as well. What a difference the weather made. Juan Correa up the inside. The black race suit, the Lotus F1 junior team driver. This was still the opening seven laps of the race. Then you can see it rained. The red flag came out. They changed to wet tires and we virtually had a new race. Igor Stupenkov was back in 13th position at this stage. That was your eventual winner over the ripple strips now, Richard Vashaw from the Netherlands. Max Futrell drove superbly, struggled to keep it in a straight line. Igor Stupenkov came from the clouds, almost quite literally, back in 13th place. Got to second at the end, not quite close enough. For sure, drove superbly. That's the two Ricky Flynn Motorsport drivers, Futrell and Anderson. Stupenkov came charging through, up to fourth, up to third. He would eventually finish second, but take nothing away for the young Dutchman, Richard Vashaw. That was the challenge from the Russian in the Tony Kart. Was the Express chassis who won? He was delighted. Your winner of KF. Senior here at the Champions Cup, La Conca, round one goes to the young Dutchman, Richard Vashaw. Wow, how sensational was that? Don't go anywhere. We'll have the podium presentations in just a few moments. And coming up after that, the KF Junior final. It has stopped rainy, thankfully for our podium presentations. I don't think the drivers will care that it's dry or wet. I think the grid girls will appreciate that it has stopped raining. I certainly will. We'll be back with you in just a few moments. The podium presentations for Senior KF, the WSK Champions Cup, round one, coming to you live on WSK.IT.
What a race that was. We've got the official podium presentations coming our way. The three drivers have arrived. Sensational race, the senior KF final. In third spot, we have Kaspar Rose Anderson. Un grande applauso para lui. In second place, Igor Stupenkov from Russia. The winner, just out of juniors, from the Netherlands, Richard Vershaw. Third place trophy for the third place driver. Well done to young Kaspar. Second place from Russia, Igor Stupenkov. He couldn't quite do it, but G came close. And your winner from the Netherlands, Richard Vashur. That is your podium for Senior KF, the final in dry and wet conditions. Let's stand by for the national anthem of the Netherlands. Grand applause or a round of applause for our podium place getters, Casper Anderson, Igor Stupenkov, and your winner of the KF final, Richard Vashur.